Your next speaker tonight is the Director of Information Technology at the College of St. Benedict and St. John's University. And she holds a Bachelor of Arts in English from the University of Minnesota Morris, a Master's of Education with a Certificate of Educational Technology from the University of Minnesota Duluth, and a PhD of Educational Leadership and Higher Education from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Her career's focus has been on mobile device security and IT security, and it continues to be a passion of hers. Prior to coming to CSB SJU, she worked as the Director of Technology Support Services at St. Cloud State University, and then she came to her senses and joined <laughs> St. John's. No, I put that in there. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Casey Gordon! Thank you very much for inviting me here today. I want to tell you about what I love about technology. I love technology, and what I love about the, it the most isn't about the gadgets, although I love those too, it's about the way that it can really bring us all together. For example, those of you that are streaming us virtually, my husband's actually in Connecticut watching this, or at least he better be if he knows what's good for him. <laughs> <laughs> um, but technology really can unite us. So 10 years ago, um, it was all about the internet, right? We were searching things, we were going out and navigating to websites, and we were typing those websites in, and we were clicking on links. What really started to happen five years ago is we saw a dramatic shift to apps and a Google search, right? Our technology was presenting us with information very quickly. We weren't going out and typing in a web address, we were just letting Google find it for us. We were clicking on an app. We were letting the app present us with that information. And so, as we look forward to the future, Gartner predicts that t by 2020, 30% of our web searches will be done without a screen. Now, what does that mean? If you don't have a screen in front of you, what's happening? What that means is the way we are interacting with technology is fundamentally changing. We are talking about the rise of the automated assistant, the device, the computer that talks to you like a human and interacts with you. So you're no longer searching something with your fingers, you're asking a computer verbally to find that information, and it is verbally bringing that information back to you. So there's a lot of devices out there right now, and in a few minutes a video is going to play and show you a little bit of an example. So what you're seeing is there's Amazon has Alexa, uh, I, Apple has their Siri device, and Microsoft has Cortana. There's a lot of these tip different types of devices out there, and this video is going to show you a little Buster. bit about how they're used. <sighs> Alexa, ask Pizza Hut to place an order. Okay, what would you like to order? And it's a touchdown! They're relying on the Blitz too much. Alexa, play My Girl. Okay. Alexa, reorder Doritos from Primera. Okay, look for delivery soon. See that drone in the back dropping the, the Doritos? So what you're really finding is that technology is changing and we are interacting with it in different ways. And so what's beginning to happen, I want to tell you a little bit about my, a day in my life. So I have Alexa in my home and I have a lot of connected devices. So in the morning I wake up far too early because a child has awoken me, as many of you might know. And, and I have to grab that 50 pound to uh, toddler in my arms and um, bring him down the stairs. And I ask Alexa to turn on the lights for me, and she does. And I go into my living room and I ask Alexa to turn on the TV, and she does. I never put my child down. I sit down on the couch and I snuggle with him. So in a way, what I'm finding is that that technology has advanced to a point where it's actually removing a barrier. I didn't have to touch a technology device to make those things happen. There's other examples out there as well. Um, in my daily life, I use Siri to, to text my sister while I'm, I'm peeling eggs and I don't have to pick up the phone. Um, I also have a, a, a scenario that happened once that really meant something to me. My four-year-old walked into the kitchen with a guitar and he said, Daddy, play me some rock and roll music. And he said, my husband said, Alexa, play some rock and roll. And she did, and they danced in the kitchen. So these are human interactions and special memories that are happening, but I didn't have to interact with a technology device. So there are some ways that, that are changing how we're interacting and, and really bringing us a return to some of that human connection, removing that technological barrier. 
Now, as you think about that, there are all kinds of things that these devices can do. My Alexa can start my car. Um, I, as I mentioned, she can do a lot of different things around the house. They can also buy things and, and order different devices, all without ever having to interact with an actual technology device. This is a computer that's been programmed to listen to you and respond with a certain set of instructions. Now, the important thing to note is that if a device is always listening, what does that mean about your privacy and your security? Now, this is the part where I scare the pants off you. <laughs> not literally. Um, but, and I'm trying not to scare you too much. But it's very important that you think about what are these devices listening? What are they recording? They say that they're retaining anywhere between 15 to 60 seconds of the conversation at any given time uh, based on the different kinds of devices. But what are those companies doing with that information? What will they do with it in the future? There's a murder investigation going on right now and there is, there's reason for the police to believe that the Alexa device in the home was actually streaming music at the time of the murder. And so they've actually reached out to Amazon and asked for the recordings. Now, Amazon is protecting privacy, and they have said no, and it has gone to the courts. And as of right now, I don't know the, the ending of that story yet, but it's an important one to be tracking. What happens with our data? Who has access to that? What can they do with that? On the lighter side of the equation, um, sometimes what ends up happening is that things might happen inadvertently. There was a young girl, um, her, her parents um, opened the door one day, and there was a giant sparkle mansion and four pounds of cookies. <laughs> now, it turns out after some research, the little girl had been chatting with, with Alexa, and she had said, Alexa, will you play dollhouse with me and buy me a dollhouse? And she did. <laughs> <laughs> and after the, the little girl concluded her, her order and said, yes, I want that, and, and um, the cookies as well, she said, I love you, Alexa. <laughs> and that was all recorded, and the parents could view that, that conversation. Um, now, all, there are parental controls, and that family did enable them, and I made sure they're enabled at my house as well. But it still begs the question, what's happening with that device? It's always on. It's always listening. It's not just necessarily about what that company is doing with that data. It's also about what happens if someone else gets access to those devices. So if there's one piece of advice that I can give you, it's to educate yourself about what is happening when you bring these devices into your home. Protect your wireless network and protect your passwords. Think before you log in all of your accounts into one device and give someone essentially access to everything. So I think that that's the piece I'd like to make sure to, to convey to you is, is be thoughtful, research, and protect yourself when you look at these types of devices. Now, um, the next thing up on the screen is actually Amelia. This company is touting her as your first digital employee. And what that means is Amelia is the person who answers the phone, potentially at a call center when you're calling for a question. I can't get my wireless on. Amelia answers. The really interesting thing about these types of devices is that if she doesn't know the answer, she escalates it to the next person on the line, and she learns from that information, and she can answer that question the next time. So when a computer learns from observational data, that's called a neural network. And it sounds very sci-fi, but this is already here. Computers are learning from themselves because they've been trained to do that. So there's, there's all this research out there that says there might come a time when we don't actually program computers, we just train them like we train dogs. Now, the, again, not to scare you, but the scary thing about that is today when you write a program for a computer, you know all the things that are happening with that computer. That programmer knows the ins and outs. When you train a computer from observational data and it begins to learn from that, there comes a point where you might not, there, that no particular one IT person knows exactly what's happening in there. <laughs> and that's a very interesting thing to think about. Um, now, it's not exactly like the Terminator and Skynet, if you guys see the picture up on the screen. Um, but it, it certainly does um, cause a few people to wonder what will happen as these computers start to begin to, to learn, essentially. Now, um, some of the other projects that are going on right now aren't just about the computer that you're interacting with virtually, but also about robots. So people think Uber is, is really working hard on autonomous cars, self-driving cars, and they are, but what they're also working on is 
the robot that will actually bring the food from the car all the way to your front door. There's a hotel in Japan that's run entirely by robots. There's not a single human staff in the entire building. And you, when you walk up to the reception desk, that's a robot. When you go up to your room, your bellhop is a robot. So I think the really interesting thing, and what I want to leave you with, is the ways that we are interacting with technology are changing at a dramatic level, and the possibilities are endless.